Now that we have power back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I'm Stormwinter Gaming, and today in this gloomy overcast here with just a bit of rain, we have that major update 11. There was modular engines as well as a couple other things to look at, but I have a cool question for you guys, and if you want to, you can answer in the comments down below. Is it just me, or does everyone have that rain going on when you first start a Stormworks world? Because... I, I don't know, it just seems really gloomy to me that every time I start up Stormworks anymore, at least in creative or, I guess, custom mode, it's always raining, but we can fix that pretty quickly here by just, you know, turning down wind and rain and overriding the weather here. Alright, so let's jump right into what we have here today, and this little test bench I have here, I'll get to in a minute. Let's talk about what we have from the update and like I was just talking about, we have that major update number 11, the modular engines out now. And we did have them in that experimental for two months, if you didn't know. So there were a few people that got just a little bit of a jump on designing some systems and some vehicles with those modular engines. Of course, I did thank everyone for helping out with feedback and testing it on that experimental branch as well as talking about things in the Discord polls. So if you don't have the Stormworks official, then you can go and vote on new things for the game. Of course, modular engines are a series of new Stormworks blocks that allow you to design and build your engine the way you want it. You place crankshaft blocks, pistons, air, fuel, exhaust, and cooling manifolds. There are also clutches, flywheel, flywheels, Power, manifolds, starters, alternators, pumps, gearbox, new radiators, and heat exchangers. You can arrange these components how you wish to design your own combustion engine. You will need to consider fuel and air mixture ratios or stoichiometric ratios to control the power and efficiency of your engine. You will need to consider engine cooling so that your engine does not overheat, engine size, flywheels, and RPS affect the torque and power output. You can boost engine performance using superchargers or an air scoop to pressure the air entering the engine. And I actually did get a little bit of a lesson from Zender, somebody in my Discord, as I was testing out a couple of the different parts in the game. You can't actually create what is called a turbocharger, but you can create a supercharger. And the difference basically being the supercharger is powered by the engine output and a turbocharger is powered by exhaust. And for some reason, even though the developer is calling this an impeller, you are not able to get a power output from a in and out of any fluid. I did even try moving water and fuel for some reason, diesel, through the impeller and it didn't work by creating any power so that's not a way to use that currently that might change in the future so of course they say we hope you enjoy all the new components and systems and we can't wait to hear your thoughts and feedback and see what engines you create much love from the stormworks devs and if you want to read through all of this then you can, but I'm going to kind of just point out a few things that, that I didn't know were going to come out. I didn't realize they were bringing out some new radiators and stuff, because my previous video, I'll flash it on screen real quick, that's been at least a month, I think, since I touched any of the modular engines in the advanced mode. So they added a few more things in that advanced mode that I really didn't know about. Of course, there's new radiators, which come with fans you can turn on and off. Of course, those do need power now. There are a couple different things like the flywheels for engines. Of course, we do have all the basic modular engine parts, but they added a ton of different exchangers and things for fluid transfer. So you have air to hair heat exchange, air to liquid heat exchange, and liquid to liquid heat exchangers. And they do have different sizes, I assume, for different sized engines. But you do have to use at least the liquid-to-liquid -liquid ones because they now differentiate between different types of liquids as well. You now have fresh water and seawater. 
So that is something you have to be pretty aware of due to the fact that seawater will damage your engine and eventually, as I've heard, it won't work anymore. So, of course, the one other thing I was really interested in testing out and admittedly I've done a lot of testing with these two objects were the impellers and the air scoop. Alright, so let's actually jump into some stone marks. Enough of this showing a couple of pictures here and there. Let's jump into the actual game. And here we have a little modular engine that it's just a little four cylinder that I've been working with forever now. I did update its cooling system with a brand new fan heat radiator. So that works pretty well. And then we can turn it up. Currently it's going to be quite loud. I do apologize if it's very loud. But of course now we can turn on that fan. And it does do a decent job of regulating our temperature here. They did add a couple other knickknacks to the modular engines that I never tested out. Like they give you a temperature sensor. As well as they did give you another part off of the modular engine that I really liked. The composite values you can actually use to regulate air and fuel volumes as well as the temperature. So here, let me show a creation that actually utilizes that. Now I myself did not actually create this microcontroller, but it does do a very good job at regulating air and fuel ratios. So if we jump in here, we can see when we bring in that composite data from the modular engine it's actually going to be reading out two numbers and just regulating air and fuel here i can't remember whose microcontroller this is but i'll definitely slap their name on the screen to give them a bit of credit because this actually works very well and as you can tell when i spawn my little go-kart in here it's actually a pretty good vehicle and the only reason i started out with a little go-kart is because I built this forever ago with a small engine. Here, I can actually go and show you guys the small engine model of it. If I can type go-kart in here. Let's see, the go-kart kind of works. As you can see on the back end, it has that small engine on it. It has to have clutch and a gearbox and a large gas tank to get going anywhere. But now that I have the brand new one, if we delete that from there and jump into this guy as you can tell as it's loading for a second this is actually two blocks shorter than the other one which actually makes it lighter as well and the engine has a very small profile now it's not going to have that microcontroller on there when it's finished and I actually upload it to the workshop but for only being a two cylinder engine this thing actually has some guts to it they definitely did change around the engines a little bit so my previous statement on my microcontrollers, modular engines, is kind of incorrect now. They have a decent amount of power to them now. As you can see, even a two-cylinder engine is getting us going pretty quick. <laughs> Although we only have 20 liters of fuel, it's still pretty good. It'll top speed, top speed, top out around 45 miles an hour, <laughs> if I can make the turn. It definitely does have a little chunky problems with it and another change they did in stormworks uh, uh eventually the gearboxes will break now if we have vehicle damage on if you do not disengage that clutch when changing gears so i don't have anything like that right now on this vehicle so this system will definitely have some damage in the future not only will that cause problems, but I don't have any system to cool the engine. Which, something else I wanted to talk about. Here, we can jump back into the workshop, I hope. One of the new parts I was talking about, but we didn't really show, was that air cooling. So we have air to liquid heat exchangers. So you can use this system right here to air cool your engine. And one of the cool things I can do with this now is take that part, add in an air scoop, and then an exhaust or just fluid port for air. And I do also have to give credit to Zendra because he showed me this little system here, which is a very good system actually. And I'm probably going to be slapping it somewhere on the front end of my vehicle here. I haven't really worked out 
what I'm going to be doing with this yet or where it's going to be placed, but I'll give you an example placement in a sense. We'll just slap it up there for now. Of course, these two fluid in and outs would be connected up to your engine, probably with a small tank of water to keep it going. But the cool thing about the air in and the air out, we don't have to have anything really powered here. You could just add a air scoop and on the output, we could just have, you know, a fluid port to let air get out the other side. And for a small engine, I'm hoping this will actually cool it. I haven't really tested it, but, you know, here's to hoping it'll actually be something half decent. Moving right along here is something I kind of messed around with for probably half an hour, if not a full hour, is a supercharged engine. And this is my E7, I believe is what it's called, my little efficiency car with the change on the gearbox. And this thing, <laughs> although it doesn't get much more of a power boost, it's cool to still see the little air scoop and the supercharger on there. Because now we can see supercharger boost, which all I'm using is a pressure sensor, I believe. Sorry, it took my mind a second to actually come up with that. But we can also see torque from that little motor running it. Of course, you can also run it off the power of your own engine. But for today's sake, I just wanted something that, you know, just worked. <laughs> Because I would have to have a power output from the rear of the vehicle coming back to this right here. So I thought I might as well just slap a little electric motor on there. And once we put it in gear, give it a little bit of power, we're going to build some supercharger boost and then launch off the line. <laughs> um, to be fully honest with you guys, I don't know if there's a problem with them. And I think I already said this in this video, but it seems like there's no change to power or almost anything with an air scoop and or a supercharger to be fully honest with you i haven't tested it that much so i could be stupid and have set it up incorrectly so that said maybe there are a couple configurations that definitely do boost power and i'm assuming that modular engines with an air scoop and or a impeller pump or supercharger those will have a lot more effect when using these but the problem being you have to regulate air to fuel so you need a microcontroller that controls the air and fuel that regulate not regulate that um change as you go faster because the impeller is going to be pushing more as you give the engine more power Likewise, the air scoop intake here will be giving you more air, which will definitely mess up values here and there. I haven't actually tested out either of those on any modular engine yet, so I'm interested to see what kind of happens with them. But yeah, that's just about everything we have here for the update. If I miss anything you guys want to get, a little bit of an example how to use things from anything else in this update i can add a little bit of a text in a comment down below so just leave me a comment if you want anything explained real quick we can jump over to the one thing i didn't really show with my stoichiometric test bench here um take apart all the radiators i've got sitting everywhere we can look at those different uh, heat exchangers as you can see, I was talking earlier to liquid to liquid heat exchangers. There are two different sizes for those. We have air to air. There's also three different sizes. Why did they only do two here and they did three on this size? Odd. But we also have those air to liquid heat exchangers on this as well. We do also have a catalytic converter. Not exactly sure why that's here, but I mean, I guess if we need our small economy cars to pass emissions, we're going to need that. But here, I'll connect a liquid to liquid up real quick. Just to give you a quick example. As you can see, my pipes are going just about everywhere here. <laughs> it's a bit of a miss. And that's an understatement. So, let me make sure I do this correctly. 
So fluid B out. So if that's in, we would want to connect the same system to the out here and connect that up and then connect up this system over here to the out and to the in right there. And then we'd have to snake some pipes over to that radiator as well. So like I was talking about earlier, if you have a boat, and it's pulling water from the ocean, say that seawater, that can only go into the radiator so it doesn't damage the engine. It's on its own loop right here, and the engine will, or excuse me, not the engine, the liquid to liquid heat exchanger will average those heats between the two systems and effectively cooling your engine. I'm not exactly sure how fast it'll do this yet. I'm assuming definitely with a larger heat exchanger that it would do better, but it seems like the small one was pretty slow, so yeah, then again, this engine was just maxing out when I was testing things at the max for a modular engine at 60 RPS. But yeah, that is just the basics of the update here, our major update 11. Of course, I might be going in depth with a couple things in the future, if you do want me to go in depth with other things, I don't know, like the new gearboxes, new flywheels, anything like that, leave a comment down below. I'll try and get to something like that. But yeah, um, one of the other things I will be doing, so you don't have to add a comment, I'm going to be testing out a lot of the different cooling systems and seeing which one is the best system to cool engines. So look forward to that in the future but of course if you guys did like this please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with stone marks and more of my content but i've never been great goodbyes so you need me and i need to go